Today we're going to be talking about section 8.3, which is the intro to trigonometry. We're going to be learning about these sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. And we are going to uh, uh, go in and figure out a way to re remember these things, okay? And so I want you guys to write down in your notes, if you haven't already, off to the side here, we can write down SOHCAHTOA. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. Okay? SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA is a great way to remember these ratios, okay? Because what it means is SOH, the first part of SOHCAHTOA, is sine. And by the way, the abbreviation for sine, if we write out the word sine, it's S-I-N-E, okay? But if we abbreviate it, it's always spelled S-I-N, okay? Three-letter abbreviation. But please say sine. It's not sin, okay? It did nothing wrong, all right? It's sine. So sine of our angle, and I'm going to, you can use angle A or whatever you want to say. So sine A equals opposite leg over hypotenuse. Okay, so that's what the SOH stands for. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. S is O over H. <clears throat> All right, well then the ka part of Sokotoa, C-A-H, that's for cosine. And so the cosine, which we abbreviate as C-O-S. Cosine of angle A equals the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. The adjacent leg of our triangle over the hypotenuse. And again, the CAH is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, and then the last one, the TOA part, TOA is for tangent. And again, we always say the word tangent, but we abbreviate it as T-A-N. All right, so the tangent of angle A is gonna equal the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And so then again, tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So something to remember, sine, cosine, tangent. What are these things? They are ratios. What are ratios? Fractions. Okay, I'm sorry to use that F word for you, but they're fractions, that's what they are. Okay, um, so we have different than fractions for these different names, these different ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, and Sokotoa is a wonderful way to remember this. It's a wonderful way to remember this, but if you're like me, I'm a horrible speller. And so my teacher would say, okay, well, remember Sokotoa, and that's great if you can remember how to spell Sokotoa. Okay, so. What do I do instead? I, of course, think of a little story. So instead of remembering Sokotoa, I remember that some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. That's just a silly way to remember Sokotoa. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. You can come up with your own little saying if you want to. All right, but it's whatever you need to do to remember how to spell Sokotoa so that you can then remember what the sine ratio is or what the cosine ratio is or what the tangent ratio is, okay? All right, any initial questions? All right, so taking a look then at our first example here. We have a triangle, now please notice that it is a right triangle. We have to have a right triangle. We're talking about right triangle trigonometry. 
Okay, and so we have our right angle, therefore we know exactly which side is our hypotenuse. Okay, it's the side opposite that right angle. Um, and they want us to find the sine of angle U. Okay, and in fact, we're just going to go ahead and do all three, sine, cosine, and uh, tangent. Okay, just for our practice here. So, if we're looking at angle U, angle U is sitting up here. Okay? And at the top of the page, or the top of every problem, I would write down Sokotoa. So remember, some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. That's how we spell Sokotoa. And if I'm trying to find the sine ratio, that's the SOH part of Sokotoa. So the sine ratio is then opposite over hypotenuse. It's the O and the H, opposite over hypotenuse. So I am gonna say then that the sine of angle U equals, well now I need to find out what my opposite side is. And remember, I'm saying opposite of angle U. So which side is opposite angle U? Which side is across the triangle from angle U? 16. 16 is the side opposite angle U. So it's 16 over the hypotenuse. We already said the hypotenuse which was which side? 34. Okay, so they want us to write each answer as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to four decimal places, okay? So first off, we have a fraction, but is this an acceptable fraction for our answer? No, why not, do you remember? Yeah, it's not reduced, that's exactly it. It's not reduced, we gotta reduce 16 over 34. So the first thing I see is that two goes into both of those, right? So two goes into 16 eight times, two goes into 34, 17 times, hey, that must be our final answer then. This reduces down to eight seventeenths. So eight seventeenths is a reduced fraction for the sine of angle U, okay? Well, they also want it as a decimal form. So in your calculator, you gotta take eight divided by 17. All right, hold on, zero point Say it again. Does it come out exactly 4, 7 and stop? Okay, so we've got four decimal places. So 0 0.47, let me look at something, 4706. Because we are rounding to four decimal places. So you have to make sure that you round it properly to four decimal places. Okay? And so there we go. There is our sine ratio. An exact fraction of 8 seventeenths or a, an approximated decimal of 0 0.4706. Okay? Questions on finding the sine ratio? None yet. Okay. Well, let's find the cosine ratio. So, cosine of angle U. Now, again, for cosine, that's the CAH part of Sokotoa. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now adjacent means what? Next to. Okay, now you gotta remember, the hypotenuse is gonna be next to this angle as well. How do I know which one's the adjacent versus which one's the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the one opposite the right angle. Okay, so if we are looking for um, adjacent to angle U. Angle U is sitting here because I'm finding the cosine of angle U. So adjacent to angle U is this side here, 30. It's next to that angle. So adjacent over our hypotenuse. Okay. Well, again, we need to reduce that down. And it looks to me like that's going to reduce by 2 again. This is going to be 15 seventeenths. So there's our exact answer as a fraction. 
But now I need an approximation as a decimal, <clears throat> which is 0 0.882 what? Four. Four. Thank you. We've got to round properly. We've got to round properly. Okay, and our last one that we need to find is then the tangent. So the tangent of angle U, and again, the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. And so again, we've already identified for angle U where the opposite side was. We've already uh, identified for angle U what the adjacent side was. And so then the tangent is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, and so again, reducing this down uh, looks to me like that's going to be 8 fifteenths. Okay, which is then approximately what? 8 fifteenths is approximately 0 0.5333 three, rounding that properly to four decimal places. All right, so our next example here, we want to talk about why are we doing this? Why do we care about these ratios? Okay, um, so here this example says to find our value of x. Now notice what they tell us. They no longer label the angles a, b, and c or whatever. Okay, they're not asking us to find the sine of angle a. Okay, they now tell us that we have a 31 degree angle in our right triangle. Okay, the nice thing about that is that we now know, since we know we have a 31 degree angle, please excuse this interruption. Sorry to interrupt. We know what the sine, cosine, and tangent of 31 degrees is. You're thinking to yourself, well, I don't know what the sine of 31 degrees is. Well, off the top of my head, neither do I. Again, this stuff was made up or found out, I shouldn't say it was made up, it was discovered by old mathematicians, and they actually figured out what that number was, and they wrote it down on a table. And there are tables that have just tons of these, uh, this information on them, okay? Uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent of any angle you could think of has been calculated hundreds of years ago, okay? But lucky for us, we have calculators. So grab your calculator. We now want to go through and solve for x. Now look, they give us the 31 degree angle. So relative to that 31 degree angle, which side is 17? That side we know. It's the opposite, thank you. It's the opposite. Which side is x, the side we're looking for? It's adjacent. We don't care about the hypotenuse. It's not marked, it's not something we're looking for. We are worried about opposite and adjacent. So if I write down Sokotoa, which trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent? The tangent uses opposite and adjacent. So that means I want to take the tangent of 31 degrees, and I know that that number is going to be equal to the opposite leg, 17, over the adjacent leg, x. And the great thing is, I can look up what this number is. I know what that number is, because I have a calculator in my hand. Okay. So, don't plug it in yet, don't plug it in yet, because what we're going to do is a little math first. And this is why I left the properties of proportions up on the uh, uh, board over there, because I want to use my properties of proportions to solve this. I am going to pretend that, I'm not going to pretend, I'm just going to make it a fraction. Tangent of 31 is a fraction. Okay? So now I have a proportion, a fraction equal to a fraction. I could cross multiply and solve, okay? In fact, I'll show that the first time. So cross multiplying and solving here, I get x times the tangent of 31 degrees equals one times 17 is 17. But if I want to 
solve for x, I now have to divide by the tangent of 31 degrees. And please remember, tangent of 31 is a number. And it's not 31, right? It's a number. It's that decimal that if you plug it into the calculator, that's what we get. Okay? So you can treat it just like a number in your equations. And so therefore, I know that x is going to equal 17 divided by the tangent of 31 degrees. Okay? But there's a quicker way to get to that stage. And it's right back here at the beginning, and it's using the properties of proportion. So please follow me over here. If you look at your properties of proportions, and uh, for any of you watching the video, um, I'm going to put that in the next slide here in just a second for the video so you'll have what I'm talking about. But if you look down here, we didn't use property number three at all in class. I told you about it. I said, hey, it's going to be important someday. We're there. Today's the day. Today's the day it's important. Okay? One of the properties of proportion, if you have a true proportion, you can then flip-flop one of the diagonal quantities. Notice the A and the D stay in their position, but the B and the C flip-flop. Okay? So looking back at what we have here, I have the tangent of 31 degrees over 1 equals 17 over X. I want to flip-flop this diagonal. So that means X over 1 equals 17 over the tangent of 31 degrees. Well, folks, what is x over 1? What's x divided by 1? Huh? It's not a trick question. What is x divided by 1? Thank you. It's x. x divided by 1 is x. So therefore, right there, it took me one step. It took me less than 30 seconds to say, oh, hey, I can flip-flop those and get to my answer. x equals 17 over the tangent of 31. OK? So before we move on to the actual final answer of this, any questions on how we got here and what we've done? OK, well then, grab your calculator. We want to type in 17 divided by tangent and your calculator automatically, most of your calculators give you a parenthesis, 31. I strongly suggest ending the parenthesis before you put it. Okay. So rounding our answer to one decimal point, are we getting 28.3? There we go. That's why this is important. Look at the information we're given. We're given one side length of our triangle, our right triangle, and we're given one of the acute angles. With that information, we can solve for all the missing side lengths, and we always could have solved for the missing angle, because we know the three angles of a, tri of a triangle add up to 180, so we could always have solved for the missing angle. Okay? So trig, powerful stuff. Okay, then the last thing I'd like us, uh, like us to do here, and let's go ahead and look at this one. The one right next to it. Um, it just says find the tangent. I'm going to change the directions. I would like you all to find the sine of angle R, the cosine of angle R, and the tangent of angle R. Find it as a reduced fraction and as a uh, decimal rounded to four decimal places. Ready, set, go. What we are doing right now is finding our three ratios. <clears throat> the sine of angle R. Right here is angle R. Sine, if you wrote down Sokotoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is 25. Opposite angle R is 25. The hypotenuse is 65. So 25 over 65 reduces down to 5 twelfths. And 5 twelfths is going to be 0 0.4167 rounded to four decimal places. Yes. 65 is 13, isn't it? Yep. Thank you for paying attention. All right, 
So, five thirteenths, which then changes to uh, zero point three eight four six. And yes, I will be taking off credit if they ask you to round to four decimal places and you only round to two. Round to what they ask you for. All right, so then cosine. Cosine of angle R is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So it's 60 over 65, which is 12 thirteenths. And 12 thirteenths gives us 9. So 0 0.9231. And then 5 twelfths is what I had before. 0 0.4167. Okay, for tangent, which is the opposite over the adjacent, so 25 over 60.